I believe I am live. Um, cool. <laughs> cool. So, so I think I think I'm good. Sorry, I'm adjusting the tripod here. Um, yeah, I had to do a last minute tripod switch. But uh, yes, guys, uh, welcome to a Sunday live stream. Um, okay, there we go. <laughs> welcome to a Sunday live stream. Um, and uh, if you guys were uh, here on Wednesday, I did a Wednesday live stream, uh, which was, I think, the first time I did a Wednesday live stream, uh, which was this last week, uh, Wednesday. But um, welcome to the the regular scheduled Sunday one. Um, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, just let me know in the comments if it sounds and looks fine. Um, you think by now I would uh, be able to tell if it looks and sounds fine, but I always just want to make sure. Uh, just in case, because I I uh, can't see it on uh, on my side, but sounds great, cool. Um, so yeah, welcome guys to the live stream. I I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, good evening, good evening, Tiffany. Um, welcome, and uh, yeah, today I I just wanted to uh, just talk some movies with you guys. Um, yeah, sorry I haven't been doing a a Sunday live stream over the last couple of weeks. Just has been absolutely crazy uh the last few weeks but um yeah but um so i'm not going to necessarily go over things that i watched because i really didn't watch that much between uh the last live stream and um now um and i the i mean the only thing i watched which was last night which was um the movie pick up on main street or no, pick up on South Street. I'm sorry. Uh, which really, this is all the uh, the only thing I watched, which is a Criterion film. Um, but if you are curious on everything that I have been watching, uh, go check out the replay on uh, my channel for Wednesday's live stream. Uh, I watched actually quite a bit over the last uh, few weeks. But um, yeah, all I watched was uh, pick up on South Street last night. And it was fantastic. Uh, highly recommend checking it out if you are into, um, you know, older, I think it's from the 50s, I believe. 1953, yeah. If you're into black and white 50s films, uh, go check this out. Uh, also, I would say if you like uh, Hitchcock types of, uh, like types of films like what Hitchcock would make, uh, that reminded me a lot of a uh, Hitchcock film. So uh, go check that out. Um, but welcome, guys. Um, Let's see, uh, watching from Montreal, California. Welcome, welcome. Um, uh, have you watched any of the laser discs you picked up? Uh, so yes, uh, I watched. So far, I've watched two of them. I've watched a. Um, I forget the name is escaping me now. Um, it's a a Fitz Lang film. Uh, it's like a hundred years old now. It was made in nineteen twenty four. Um, it's like a two-part series i forget what the name was um but i watched that and i watched a another one where it's a it was a compilation of like early cinema so it had like a trip to the moon on there it had a uh, train arriving to a station uh i'm trying to think what else it did have on there uh great train robbery um and just some like really 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 early stuff that um you know i do not have on any other format so it was kind of fun just to see you know, just, you know, stuff that is a hundred plus years old, um, you know, just watching that on Laserdisc. And so, um, yeah, I, I talked about those more in depth, a little bit more in depth on the last uh, live stream, but I would like to actually be watching more of the, the Laserdiscs that I picked up um, because there's a lot of really cool titles in there. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I'm also trying to balance everything that I'm watching. I'm trying to, you know, continue to be watching more Criterion because uh, it really is a goal of mine is to, you know, I've spent a lot of money on these things and a lot of them I have not seen. So I'm trying to watch more of those. I'm trying to watch more horror VHS, more horror movies in general, um, and more Laserdiscs uh, and more of the director's films that I've collected over the years. And so I'm uh, just trying to watch more altogether. Uh, I just actually passed, uh, I'm at 130 movies this year that I've seen. Uh, so um, I'm coming along nicely with my goal, uh, which is, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's just, you know, 
know, there's only so much time in the day that I can dedicate to watching movies, but um, yeah. So let's see, JD uh, said, uh, how are you doing today, Kyle? I am good. Uh, today was actually a pretty fun day. Me and my wife ran some errands. Um, there was a uh, a library book sale going on near us, and uh, we ended up stopping in. And I found a few things. Um, I'll talk about more of that in a collection update video. But uh, it was just kind of fun, just to uh, um, you know, just to run some errands. It was a really, it was actually really nice out. It's like in the seventies um, in uh, the Akron area of Ohio, and. Um, yeah, it was just, it was, it's kind of a nice change of pace because the last few days have just been really rainy. Um, and so I'm just enjoying the nice weather today, but um, yeah, let's see. Um, what is your favorite movie, Kyle? Uh, all-time favorite movie is The Empire Strikes Back, uh, followed very closely by uh, the original Star Wars or Star Wars A New Hope. Um, and then third favorite is Drive. Um with uh, starring Ryan Gosling. Uh, and then fourth would be Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And fifth would be a movie called Comet, which not a lot of people talk about, uh, but I think it is just a fantastic film that I really think people should check out. Uh, I do have a full video talking about uh, all of my my different favorite films. Um, you know, all of the... Uh, um, I don't know, my top, I think it's like top 24 movies of all time or something. Uh, that is a video somewhere on my uh, channel. It's earlier on my channel, but uh, if you are curious. Um, uh, how are all your New Year's goals coming along so far? Um, I would say they're f pretty good. Um, I mean, a few of them, I feel like I'm not quite um, achieving how I want. Uh, I mean, the amount of movies watching 365 films this year, I feel like I'm coming along nicely on that because I'm at 130. And so, um, you know, I'm slowly getting there. Uh, but I mean, we're only in April, so there's plenty of time for that. Uh, and then just uh, collecting criterion as far as that goes, where uh, owning from spine numbers one to 300, I feel like uh, I'm really just waiting on the Criterion sales uh, to really, you know, up that goal. Uh, there are a few box sets and out of print titles that I would like to, I still need to get if I want to complete that goal. And so I feel like I just need to, um, you know, focus down a little bit on that. Uh, but I mean, stuff like the, the Laserdisc lot that I purchased, uh, I feel like that kind of offset my, my goals for the year. So that might change. Um, but I am, I'm happy that I got the Laserdisc because I feel like that is, a, a valuable addition to my uh, collection, uh, especially that it's a curated collection. So it's like really just good stuff. Um, and I figured, you know, Criterion will always be around. Um, you know, stuff might go out of print or whatever, but uh, I feel like buying up someone else's collection is more beneficial, uh, especially if it's like a curated collection. Um, so we'll see if I complete my or my uh, collecting all the criterions uh, for spine number one through 300. And then same thing goes with my director section. Uh, since I made that goal, I've added like two or three more directors, which I really need to make a video going over all the different directors that I have in my uh, section. Um, but I've added a few directors. So that means that I'm missing more movies, which just means more money. So um, I will... Um, I don't know. I will, I'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, I think that that's all the, the goals that I had, um, that at least I'm thinking of, I have them written down somewhere, but I need to uh, revisit those. Maybe I'll do like a, uh, halfway through the year, uh, revisit video and kind of, um, you know, go into more detail on, uh, like what's like where I am with those, uh, goals, but, um, Let's see. Do you prefer classics or contemporary? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, it depends. Um, I really like. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I really like. I mean, I like all different types of um films, and like, I don't know. It it really depends on like with like when it comes to like um with. Uh, Hmm. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> when it comes to like Criterion, I would say probably more 
like I mean, I, I feel like what Criterion does is like a nice blend of classics and contemporary, uh, especially from around the world. And so uh, I feel like there's like, you know, there's newer movies in there, there's classics, there's, you know, world cinema and stuff. So um, I'd say both. I really, I mean, both I would, I find myself, it really just comes down to like what type of mood I am uh, in to uh, watch. But um Let's see. What is your favorite color, Kyle? I would say my favorite color would be green, uh, followed very closely by like blue. And I'd be like a, a dark green. Um, and then probably after blue would be like black somewhere in there. Um, but I mean, I know technically black is not a color, but it's like the absence of color or whatever. But like, I, I mean, you know, I think black just looks uh, really sharp, but uh, I'd say green probably is my favorite color. Uh, and what is your favorite TV show? Um, favorite show of all time would be Twin Peaks. Uh, it's just, it's, you know, directed by David Lynch. Uh, it's written by David Lynch and Mark Frost. And it's just a a, a fantastic show that uh, I've seen a couple times now. And uh, the first season especially is like a flawless, um, is like a... Uh, um, it really is just like a flawless show, in my opinion. Uh, I really like The Return. I feel like it's a very different type of piece of television. Um, and yeah, I mean, Twin Peaks followed very closely by the show Lost. I'm a big fan of Lost. I feel like it's a, uh, it kind of changed how shows were like made after that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I also really like Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I feel like this is a it has yet to not get funny, um, and it is just a, it's a solid show. But um, do you like musicals? Yes, I. Uh, it really depends on the musical. Um, I would say like movies like uh, like La La Land. Um, I like um, movies like. I'm trying to think. Um, like when it comes to like musicals in the sense of film, I like like uh, Les Miserables um, or uh, I'm trying to think of other musicals that I actually enjoyed. Um, I liked a great, or, uh, The Greatest Showman until it became like overplayed everywhere. Uh, and then I it's, it's kind of become a little bit annoying to me now. But um, and I don't know, as far as like, musicals in like a theater sense um i have seen only a handful um i've seen uh let's see uh hamilton was one that i saw in uh in person i saw les mis in person as well um which both were fantastic uh but i don't find myself really going to like the theater like a musical like theater um very much um but overall i'd say i like musicals it's not like my favorite genre though um but uh do you have a favorite movie uh soundtrack um oh that's a great question so i do kind of have a like out of all the different like cds that i usually i tend to buy i stopped buying cds though that much uh like movie soundtrack cds are the always the ones that like i still gravitate towards um the twin peaks soundtrack is probably number one um drive the soundtrack to drive uh soundtrack to eternal sunshine unfortunately it just kind of like follows my favorite movies because i feel like the the music within my favorite movies really um like it really makes the movie better in my opinion and so like um like the drive soundtrack the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind soundtrack uh even the comment soundtrack um i mean drive i even have like the vinyl of which is really fun and same thing with Twin Peaks. Um, yeah, I mean, the the Tenant soundtrack is honestly pretty solid as well. Um, and I've been listening to, like, the Oppenheimer soundtrack, uh, which is great. But um, I'd say probably my favorite would be Twin Peaks. I find myself listening to that uh, fairly regularly. Um, let's see. Uh, this week, I watched The Aviator on Cinema, uh, Simpson Season 5, Yellowstone Season 2, and Oppenheimer again. That was awesome. I, I, I feel like, yeah, we um, you mentioned that you were going to go see The Aviator in the cinema. Um, that sounds awesome. I wish I could. Uh, I feel like that would be a fun movie to see um, in the theaters. But uh, And then I have, uh, what is your favorite football team, Kyle? I honestly 
don't really watch sports, um, like any sports at all. Um, just never been my thing. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I don't really have a favorite team. Um, I feel like living in Ohio in the like Akron area, like by default, it's going to be the Cleveland Browns. But um, I'd say I don't really, I, it's never really been, you know, something that I cared all that much of. Um, it's just never been really for me. Um, but, um, and do you own any vinyls? Yes, I have a very, uh, a pretty small vinyl collection. They're not down here. Uh, they're actually upstairs in my uh, living room. But maybe I'll do a video someday kind of just going over all the vinyls I have. Um, I am very glad that I uh, I have not gone down the vinyl rabbit hole because um, my wife has a friend who uh, is really into vinyl. Um, and the... Um, and um, the... Uh, let me think. Oh yeah. Um, my wife has a friend who's very into vinyl and, um, you know, she has a very large vinyl collection and, um, you know, she does the whole record store day thing. And I used to work at a store where they sold vinyl and, um, yeah, I'm very glad that I don't go down that hole. I'm, I'm glad other people enjoy it, but I just, there's so much, especially if you go really far into it where, you know, this pressing or, you know, getting the original pressing and all the things, um, I'm happy with just movies. Um, so I, I do, the only vinyl I really do collect are either my favorite bands. Um, so like the killers is like one of my, uh, if not actually, I will say the killers are my favorite band. And so I have a few of their vinyls. Um, and then I have a few soundtracks like drive or twin peaks. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I have. Um, uh, just some of my other favorite bands too, like 1975, I have a vinyl there and, um i don't know just odds and ends when i come across them uh cheap enough if it's something that i i feel like would add i don't know i really like on vinyl um so i tend not to just like buy vinyl for whatever uh like it it, it has to be something very specific um and so like the uh i feel like the the twin peaks vinyl is uh, like one of my my prized ones just because it is i don't know it looks nice it's like a nice limited edition and um yeah. Um, do you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles last role in live action movie? Do I know the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles last Ronin live or live action movie? I have not seen that one. No, I've never been a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. Um, I don't know if it's just because I didn't really grow up on it. Um, I didn't watch a ton of TV growing up, um, but um, yeah, I just, it wasn't my, my like go-to cartoon. Um, and I don't know, I feel like I, my, it just wasn't really part of my childhood. So I just didn't really watch a ton of it. Um, but who is your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Uh, the only one that I can think of is Michelangelo. Um, I know they're all named off of, um, what's it called? like artists or whatever um but i i i know michelangelo and that's that's about it i couldn't tell you the names of all of them <laughs> but um yeah uh let's see ralph says good evening everyone this week i re-watched rocky um back to the future um and 40 year old virgin um that's awesome i, I like i feel like back to the future is um is just like a, um, I don't know, it's a perfect film. And um, I feel like every time it comes on, or if I'm like watching, if I'm doing something in my movie room, sometimes I'll just like turn it on. And it is just one of those movies that uh, truly is just a perfect film, that there is really no, um, there's no flaws that I can see with it, especially the last like third act is just, um, it's so perfect and it's just so well done that. Uh, especially as, like whenever he is um, the whole like about to go back into the future, um, that whole sequence is just flawless. Um, the editing and just timing of everything, and I've seen it so many times. But I mean, every single time I am like on the edge of my edge of my uh, seat, you know, wondering if he's actually going to be able to you know hook the wires together and send him back. And it, it's just it's perfect. 
um, such a great, great film. Um, let's see. Do you like Inconceivable? I have not seen that, Sean. I am. Yeah, I have not seen that. Um, but um, let's see, I rewatched uh, Braveheart yesterday. So long. Uh, let's see, so long. But one of my favorites. Any thoughts? Uh, it's been a very, very long time since I've seen it. Uh, but I remember watching it and really, really liking it. I feel like um, I should sit down and rewatch it. Uh, I think I do. Let's see. I'm trying to see what format I own it on. Uh, Blu-ray. Yes, I have the Blu-ray of it. But uh, I would like to sit down and rewatch it because it's been, I mean, it was kind of like before I was like really, really into movies. Um, I remember sitting down and watching it. But uh, I would like to rewatch it uh, now. Um, what is your favorite film of each rating? G, P, G, P, G, 13, R, etc. Um, let's see. G, I would say, I'm trying to think of like G rated movies. Um, I think, so I'm like 90%. Let me see, actually, I'm going to step out. Okay, this is rated G. Uh, this is a childhood classic for rated G movies, but Pebble and the Penguin um, is just one that I've seen so many times growing up. I was really into penguins growing up for some reason, but um, this is an underrated film in my opinion. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, probably my favorite G-rated film. Uh, PG, I would have to go with, Ep or uh, you know, um, what's it called? Empire Strikes Back. Wow, I just blinked on that. Um, Empire Strikes Back. Um, PG-13. Wow, that's a... Wow, that's, like, hard to, like, narrow it down. Um, PG-13, I feel like... Probably... Wow. I don't know. I mean, uh, Revenge of the Sith just keeps popping into my mind, so I'm going to say that. There's probably a better option. Um, and then as far as R-rated goes, I, would, I mean, that's also a hard one because there's so many movies. Um, but... I'd say either... I mean, besides just going with my, like, top films... Um, I don't know. That's a that's a really hard question because there's so many great, um, you know, PG thirteen and R rated films um, out there. But um, and I don't know if I have like a favorite like NC seventeen film or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as R, I'd probably just say Eternal Sunshine or Drive. Um, probably one of those two. But that's a great question. I feel like that's a um, there's a lot of each of those. Um, of each of the genres that I mean, each of the the ratings um, out there. But uh, most anticipated twenty twenty four film of premieres and or premiere and uh, DVD Blu ray releases. Wow, that's actually a good question too because I'm not like so thing with like when it comes to like my collecting habits, I don't necessarily pay attention to like the new releases, um, which maybe I should be, but I always tend to pay more attention to like the like stuff that's already existing like so uh for instance with like criterion um i'm very far behind in like you know I, I tend not to just buy like the newest criterion that come out um i'm still like you know in the spy numbers 200 range uh, of like purchasing titles um and those usually are like my um my most like i, I want to watch those like the most um but for in regards to like this year um, I honestly don't even know what's coming out this year. I, I usually at the beginning of the year, I make a list of everything that's coming out that I like have interest in watching. Uh, this year I did not do that. So maybe I should revisit that. Um, and, uh, maybe I should watch or, um, uh, you know, go through and see what, um, you know, what I need to, uh, um, what's it called? What I need to be uh, paying attention to, but, uh, have you read Invincible comic book? I have not, no. I, uh, I'm i not really into comic books either, but um, 
Yeah, I, I like that's another rabbit hole between like vinyl and uh, comic books. I'm just like, I just never got into it. Uh, I'll occasionally, very, very occasionally purchase a comic book, uh, but usually it has to be like a horror comic book. So like uh, the Friday 13th series or the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like it's been many years since I've even bought one of those, but um, it almost has to be like movie related for me to like enjoy, I guess. Um and I mean, I like the Star Wars comic books, but again, I just don't find myself really reading uh, comic books all that much. Um, but uh, let's see, I stopped buying films this uh, let's see this year. Uh, too many other bills do um, financial uh, hiccups hold you back from buying media? Yes, actually, uh, quite frequently. Uh, there's always. I feel like, especially now, um, I feel like, you know, I can go to the grocery store and walk out with two bags spending like a hundred dollars. And it's just, I have no idea where all the money's going. Uh, so, I mean, at least in the Ohio area, like the cost of living just feels like bad. And I, I have a feeling that's pretty much everywhere right now, but, um, yeah, I like, there's always, I feel like there's always like house projects going on too that I would like to be doing. Um, and um, I don't know, it's just, just like little things here and there um, that, you know, like, uh, you know, car maintenance or, uh, I mean, it seems like every other day I'm putting $20 worth of gas into the car. So it's just like, it's annoying um, because like when I, I mean, I'm thinking back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, like, um, how cheap my expenses were. I mean, granted, I was living with roommates or I was living at home or whatever. Um, so my cost of living was pretty low, but um, I felt like I could, you know, use my entire paycheck just towards movies. But uh, now it seems like I have to still like kind of work on the balance of things. So um, yeah, I mean, I feel like there is always something, um, but that's just kind of like how, you know, that's how things work out, I suppose. Um, but uh, what is your top three criterion for someone just getting into criterion? Um, hmm. If you are just now like getting into criterion, I would probably recommend. Um, hmm. I feel like this one's a pretty easy. Uh, the red shoes, I feel like would be a great introduction to, um, like, uh, I mean, this is from the, it's 1948, it's 132 minutes. Um, it is in English. So, um, but it is kind of like artsy. And so I feel like, you know, this would be a good, I need to upgrade this to 4k, but, uh, this would probably be a good one, uh, to get into, um, if you want something like, older um passion of jonah arc um this is from 1928 it is in french uh it has well it's a silent film so it has like the uh, the french um title cards uh, i feel like this would probably be a good like introduction to foreign cinema uh, it's only 81 minutes long so it's not going to be too long for you to like you know slowly get into the black and white foreign cinema uh black and white you know french films i feel like that would be like a nice introduction um but then, I mean, it really comes down to, like, personal taste. Um, but, wow, I feel like there's, like, a lot that I could recommend. Um, any Charlie Chaplin film, I feel like, would be also be a pretty solid choice. Uh, or if you like, I'm trying to, hmm. Um, yeah, I'd say Charlie Chaplin, um, I'd say if you could get a hold of this trilogy, it's fantastic. This is the before trilogy. This is one of my favorite box sets, uh, within the Criterion collection. And, uh, it's just some solid films in here. It's only, it says three movies. Um, and I just feel like they're pretty fun. Uh, but you could also, you know, if you wanted to, you know, just do a deep dive and just, you know, kind of jump into the deep end, I would recommend checking out uh, Seven Samurai. 
this is a Kira, a Kira Kurosawa. Uh, I don't know if I would rest necessarily say this should be like your first Kurosawa film. Um, but this was one of my first ones that I watched uh, for a Kira Kurosawa. I mean, it is 207 minutes long. It's 1954, black and white, and in Japanese. So um, if that sounds like an interesting uh, time for you, or you can watch, you know, uh, Seventh Seal is another classic from the Criterion Collection. Uh, it's also, this is in Swedish. This is probably a nice introduction to uh, Igmar Bergman. Um, so I would uh, probably recommend that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of different types. Um, biggest suggestion to you, though, I'd say go onto the Criterion website, uh, scroll through their uh their website and just kind of see you know what sounds interesting what even like what artwork sticks out to you um or i mean if nothing else just start at the very beginning of the uh all the spy numbers uh which i mean the the first one in print within the uh criterion collection is spy number two um and that is seven samurai um but I feel like with Criterion, like you really can't go wrong with like starting somewhere. I feel like you could pretty much just, uh, you know, jump in anywhere and you're like, you'll experience just like a different side of films that you, you know, might not get with just like your traditional like Hollywood films. I feel like with Criterion, you can just uh, experience like a lot of different types of stuff. If that, hopefully that was helpful. But, um, um, the truth what do you think of whiplash and uncut gems um whiplash uh is fantastic i i really actually liked whiplash um he the the director of whiplash la la land uh first man and babylon uh damien chazelle i think is his last name i could be mistaken on that uh but i actually added him to my favorite director section um i feel like his editing style is like very precise and it's like a very um the movie moves very quickly uh which i really enjoyed i feel like it's like a i don't know it has like a lot of energy to it um and so it's just a i don't know it's a fun movie to watch um i can see why a lot of people put it in their like top 100 films i mean it's it has like this like fast paced nature or uh nature to it and it feels like edited like I don't know. It feels like edited to music, if that makes sense. Um, in a similar sense with um, the fast paced editing, Uncut Gems is both one of the most enjoyable, but also stressful films I think I've ever seen, uh, where it is just, you know, I, I feel like I had to hold my breath for the entire film, um, which I have it on Criterion somewhere. Um and I feel like with uh, with Uncut Gems, it is, I mean, it's 135 minutes. Uh, I really do think that this really shows um, uh, Adam Sandler in a completely different type of film. And I really actually appreciate that they use Adam Sandler because I do think that he has more acting range than what people give him credit for. Um, I mean, movies like um, his earlier stuff, like The Wedding Singer or... Um, trying to think of other movies that he was like in a more serious role like punch drunk love even um which isn't necessarily earlier but it's just him in a different type of role and so uncut gems really uh puts him in a a, a far different type of movie um and so i saw this in the theaters actually and it was um it was very i mean it was a very like anxiety inducing um experience but i i really i mean i enjoyed it um I don't know. I don't think I've actually revisited the movie since the theater experience, uh, just because it, it is like, it's a lot to, uh, to take in. But, uh, I mean, overall, I really liked the, mo um, the movie and, um, I don't know. I need to go and watch the, uh, the special features on this, uh, criterion edition and, uh, just some of the, um, the behind the scenes of it, but, uh, yeah, fantastic film. If you have not seen uncut gems, uh, go check it out um let's see thanks so much yep uh as criterion is uh hard to get by in my country i own um a yellow blu-ray box version of black orpheus 1959 uh, do you like it um so yes i have 
uh, Black Orpheus. Is it Black Orpheus? Black Orpheus. Yes. Um, where is that? Yes, I have it on a Blu-ray here. Um, this movie was actually like kind of sad. Um, I was not anticipating, because I didn't know anything about it when I first watched it. Uh, I was not anticipating it to be kind of like a sad ending. Um, and Or just like, not necessarily a sad ending, but just like sad elements throughout the film. Um, it was fantastic. The coloring was ble- like absolutely beautiful. Um, and, uh, it's a Portuguese film, which I honestly, this is like a, uh, Portuguese films. I don't think I have a ton of, but, uh, overall, I really, really enjoy this. Um, I would like to revisit it, um, soon, but yeah, I, um, I think the, if I'm not mistaken, the DVD, uh, looks, I want to say it has like a yellow case to it or something that I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but, um, yeah, overall, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, with such a large collection, how often uh, do you rewatch movies? Um, unfortunately, not very often. I um, I will um, occasionally rewatch something, but I, I tend not to be. Uh, I don't. Know, I feel like there's so much like things that I own that I've not seen that I will be watching those um, more often. Uh, I mean, but I, I will say a couple weeks ago, I rewatched a movie um, within my collection. I rewatched uh, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, mainly because my wife hasn't seen it. And so we sat down and watched it. Um, and so there's like things that I will like, you know, I'll show my wife or, you know, I'll have friends over and we'll, we will uh, rewatch something that I've seen before. Um, so I don't know. And th- then there's the occasional time where I am just like really in the mood to rewatch. I don't know. Um Gandhi I don't know um <laughs> this is the first movie I saw like I'm just you know stuff like that that I'm just like really in the mood to rewatch something and so I will uh sit down and revisit uh, it but overall I would say nine times out of ten if I'm watching something it's going to be something that I've never seen before um so that is kind of like the uh the big you know the the thing is like well because I've seen, you know, I've heard people like, it was like, well, if you aren't rewatching things, why hold on to them? And uh, I do kind of like view it as, especially when it comes to like Criterion, I view it more as like, you know, this is like almost like a textbook. So I could like refer to it um, if I just say it's like, oh, well, there's a specific shot that I really liked or there's something spe- like a specific character, like the way they present, like, you know, said that piece of dialogue, I want to you know, basically like learn from that and kind of like, not necessarily mimic it, but like, um, that could be like inspiring for, you know, me creating something down the line. And so it kind of like, I look at it as like a textbook to uh, revisit when I need to. Um, it's also just, uh, if I want to sit down and rewatch something, um, I have it. I, I never have to, I never have the fear of it like going away or, um, I mean, like, uh, I mean, How to Train a Dragon, for instance, I didn't have to uh, go through and find it on a streaming service, even though I've already seen it. Um, I, I just, I have it down here and I can just pop it in and watch it when I want to. So, um, I don't know. It, it is always a battle of uh, deciding, you know, if I have something, am I going to rewatch it or is it just taking up space on my shelf? And so uh, that's also why I do sometimes curate my collection where I will, and this is mainly for like the, my run of the mill DVDs, um, but uh, stuff that either I have owned for years and I've not watched or stuff that I've already seen and I'm really asking myself, am I actually going to rewatch it or am I just holding on to it for the sake of holding on to it? Um, so I don't know. I, uh, it kind of, <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, uh, but do you have a worst movie ever and how, uh, do you go about qualifying such a thing? Let's see, do you have a worst movie ever and how do you qualify? Um, yes, actually I do have, um, my personal least favorite movie ever made, uh, would be movie 43, which actually I'll grab it. 
Um, I have it on Blu-ray or not Blu-ray DVD in my bad movie section, which is like filled with a bunch of like bad movies, like uh, um, so good they're bad type of movies, like The Room, Birdemic, uh, Troll Two, stuff like that. Um, but this is one that I would consider uh, to be bad, bad. Um, this is my least favorite movie ever made. Uh, it is just not. It's not funny. Um, it was uh, trying to be funny. Uh, there's so many big actors in here, like Hugh Jackman, uh, Chris Pratt is in here, Richard Gere, like um, Emma Stone, uh, let's see, Johnny Knoxville. I mean, just a ton of like big name actors. Uh, and the problem with this movie that I have with it is just that it the the way that they were able to make this movie is essentially somebody i don't know who directed it but um somebody had a one of these people as a friend and they're like hey i'm just putting together this little sketch comedy thing you want to be in it um and so they like owed them a favor or whatever and so they were like sure i'll be in it uh just say for this example uh, i don't know for sure if this was it but like richard gear um and then he he went to uh, just say Chris Pratt and be like, hey, I'm putting together this little sketch comedy. Richard Gere is in this movie. Uh, do you want to be in it? And so um, he basically did that for every single one of these people and built up this cast of like, oh, all these famous people are in it. You should just be in it too. It's like this fun little thing. Um, and it essentially conned all of these people to be in a movie. And it just, it wasn't good (laughs) it's just um all of that work and that effort to basically produce something that is just not like there's like just no like goodness to it um i mean technically speaking it was shot like fine um but overall it just really isn't like I, i feel like it missed its whole purpose of being made which is supposed to be funny and it just isn't funny um but that's probably my least favorite movie. Um, I would say what qualifies a bad movie would be like, you know, if it's rewatchable, um, if the, and especially like the production behind things, if it was uh, made with like good intentions, um, then I would say that's like one thing. Like there's certain movies like, uh, you know, Troll 2 where, he was trying to make a scary movie and it just wasn't scary. Um, that's like one thing where it's like, it's laughably bad because you can just sit down and enjoy it and have a good time. But when you're like openly lying basically to your whole cast, just to produce something, I feel like this is kind of like a scummy way to make a movie. Um, so that's probably why it's my least favorite movie. Um, yeah, I, hopefully that answers a, a question as well. Um, and the thing is, like, too, there's a there's other movies that, like, I don't like, but then other people enjoy. Um, I just feel like with Movie 43, I've yet to come across a single person who's actually, like, enjoyed it. Um, so, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, also, like, uh, I, sh- I should add, like, the whole um, brand of uh, The Asylum, uh, the studio of uh, The Asylum. Uh, I, it's kind of the same thing where they're like, they're no, like they're trying to make a bad movie. And I just feel like that is such a a waste on so many different levels uh, where I know like when it comes to a movie, there are so many people involved and so much effort that has to go in to make something. Um, And when you are trying to make something bad, it just, it feels like such a, uh, um, I don't know. It just feels so like wasteful. Um, And I don't know, especially when there's movie, like there's people out there who would love to tell a story, but they can't because of budget reasons and, you know, stuff like movie 43, you know, has went through multiple levels of like approval to get made. Um, But yeah. Okay, so I'm probably going to keep this live stream, like, semi-short-ish. Um, but mainly because I, I, since I did one, you know, a couple days ago, um, I feel like all the things I was, uh, the topics I was talking about on the last one is stuff I would have talked about today. But, um, 
yeah, I'm hoping to to continue my live streams on Sundays um, from now on because unless stuff comes up, um, let's see. Uh, Cats is a prime example of that. Uh, superb cast, crew, budget, and uh, potential. Twirling uh, film. Twirling film. Um, yes, I would agree. I feel like, yeah, uh, Cats is another example of where it's like, there's so much that went into it. And it just, it, it was just a, um, I don't know. Um, or I mean, the uh, Suicide Squad. I, I don't know if I can say that time. Uh, uh, this movie um, is another example where there is a a lot of people were involved in making this, and it just didn't. You know, it just I feel like it flopped. Um, not necessarily saying every movie that flops is a it is a bad um title i feel like um like or is because that's like uh there's certain movies out there that the um that were like just kind of flops but they were also just like you know now they were looked at as more of a um i'm trying to think of how to word that um looked at as like they, yeah they flopped back then but then th- now they are appreciated for what they are um i mean I don't know. So one of these days, I'm going to go through my my good bad movies and uh, talk about each one because uh, I have a, a, a decent collection now of movies that I consider to be so bad they're good. Um, but yeah, um, I think I think that is uh, that is all. So uh, I'm probably going to wrap it up here. Um, but. If, Thank you guys for tuning in. I know this one was a little bit shorter than my my normal live streams, but um, yeah, I, I still want to. Um, I don't know. I still wanted to jump on here and uh, do one today. Um, but if there is nobody, no other comments, questions, concerns, um, keep an eye out this week. I will be posting a. Um, video i'm excited because uh some of the it'll probably be a uh, a collection update um let's see sorry for the uh dutch auto text correction <laughs> you're a good man um yeah the uh i'll probably be doing a a collection update this week um especially i'm excited about a couple items that i picked up recently um that i'm excited to show off but uh yeah so um i think i'll end it here but uh thank you guys uh for tuning in uh if you are watching this on the replay uh thank you for watching i do appreciate it uh feel free to leave a comment down below on any of the things that were said questions um or things that you just want to ask me i'll be more than happy to ask them um yeah i usually do uh for those who are um just tuning in to this live stream for the first time i usually do live streams at seven o'clock eastern standard time um and yeah so i i usually what i'll do is i'll post on my instagram story uh like ideally 24 hours in advance when the live stream is happening so keep if you want um to stay updated on that follow me over on instagram it's kyle's movie collection um and if you're if you are curious as well i do have a letterboxd um i'll link that in the description eventually as well um but yeah i think that's i'll pretty much do it so uh thank you guys again for tuning in i really do appreciate it um i always i enjoy doing these i always have fun with these um but yeah so take care guys Uh, i hope everybody has a fantastic week out there Um, and I will see you guys all next week. Have a good night, guys.